Well, good morning. It is adventure season, and today I want to introduce to you my new alpaca raft, the Alpaca Raft Forager. It's a really cool boat that you can bring along with you on your flatwater and whitewater adventures down these uh, more remote country roads that lead to beautiful lakes and vistas. Uh, it's a little bit tricky sometimes to carry in kayaks or canoes into some of these places. So uh, let's uh, learn all about my alpaca raft. I'm gonna do a multi-part series. Today we'll just be showing you the raft itself and uh, all its specs. Well, this is the alpaca raft forager and it is a beast. It is, uh, 10 feet by 4 feet. It's made of 420D nylon and it also has an 840 uh, ballistic nylon floor. So it's a really sturdy boat, uh, very puncture resistant, which is great. You can go on all of your adventures uh, on land and on water with this. This packs down to 13.9 pounds uh, and about 20 inches by 10 inches if you can roll it nice and tight. So uh, this can fit in your pack uh, when you're hiking. And uh, you can go on lots of adventures, you know, if you've been mountain biking and then going up to, um, you know, you find a little tiny trout pond, well, take your boat out and go fishing, you know what I mean? So this is really cool. You can take it on white water, you can take it on flat water. And one really cool thing about this, it is self-bailing. And these are the holes for the self-bailing feature. If you don't want this, just tape it down. But as you can see, you can see right through here, the deck is right through there. So water comes in and it'll go out this way. And trust me, it won't fill up so much that you try to drown or something like that. It is a really, really awesome feature of this boat. You can have lots of fun in white water and not worry too much about your bail bucket. And the attractive thing about this is it holds a thousand pounds of gear. Uh, not many dinghies can boast that. Now this is an expensive boat. It usually retails around $2,500 USD. But uh, just think of the adventures you can unlock with this. You can take it on a plane. Uh, you can just pack this all down into your bag and check it like a check bag. So let's see what you get in the bag. I've uh, taken everything out of its uh, carrying sack and this is the alpaca raft right here. This is the forager. I'll show you what it comes with. Uh, so it comes with a deck right here that inflates where you sit upon. It comes with the inflation bag and it's carrying sack, which is underneath this pump and repair kit. So the repair kit comes with it. The pump uh, to top off uh, the inflation, I got that separately and what's really cool about it is that you can unscrew this and it's a storage container so I've got a few little things in there like a rope so uh, that's really neat. Extra is this little seat I bought that some of the wraps come with it this one I bought extra for a second passenger. What is really unique about this vessel is that you can unzip this and store all your gear in the tubes it features 13 inch tubes and all this tube space you can store your gear in. You can purchase dry bags from Alpaca Raft that fit exactly inside the tubes. I find that largely unnecessary. You can just buy your own dry bags or stuff your backpack in there. <coughs> of course, keep in mind, anything that you store in the boat is gonna be sealed in there until you deflate it. So don't put a day pack in there that you actually wanna use on your trip. You'll have to get to it once you're on shore and you deflated the boat. Getting all set up is really easy. There's one area to inflate the boat. You just unscrew this valve right here. And uh, you can see right there, very sleek setup. Uh, you want to make sure that this is locked so that the air doesn't leak out when you go to bump it up. Uh, when you deflate it, you just click it the other way and air will rush out. So we're going to inflate this now. Now to inflate the boat, use the inflation bag that has a similar mate to the valve on the bottom of the bag. So you screw it in to the port here, to the valve, in a clockwise fashion until it's on there tightly. Untwist your bag. And uh, you don't have to have a windy day or anything like that, but it does help. There's wind behind me, as you guys can see. So you just catch the air. Ooh, look at that. And what I like to do to inflate it um, is I just get the air in here and then some people will do a crunch. I just like to roll it down into the boat. So I kind of go standing in the middle, I go like that. And I just inflate the boat. The fastest I've inflated the boat is about nine minutes, 12 seconds. I have time myself to get it completely set up. So it's really not that long. Some people use a different technique. Um, they just kind of do a belly crunch, like they roll it down and kind of go like this. I find it kind of awkward, so I just don't do it that way. I'm just going to do this. And once you're done, you'll be able to put in the deck, and I'll show you how to do that. 
So there it is, all inflated. It's quite an impressive size, as you guys can see. And now we're going to just top it off with our mouths or a hand pump till it's nice and taut. I bought this pack craft pump, as I mentioned before. It's just so much easier and you don't get out of breath. When you're done, just put the cap back on the valve. Make sure you do it up nice and tight. Now keep in mind that when you put the boat in water, it's going to be cold water. It's going to deflate just a little bit. So maybe leave it like tied to shore in the water, let it experience the cold, and then you're going to need to just top it up before you head out on your trip. The next thing we're going to do is put the deck in. Uh, it does zip in, so you don't want to um, inflate this and stick it in there, or you're going to have a really hard time stuffing it in because it, uh, it takes a fair bit of space as well. So we just pop it in, and then we'll zip it right up. I'll just show you a little zipper close up there so it's all sealed in the boat. And then what we can do is use our bag or hand pump to inflate this. Again, do make sure that uh, the valve is closed so that you can inflate this without it deflating instantly uh, as you pull out your pump. Before I get too ahead of myself, I'm going to put in the seat as well. As you can see, there's little clips that go in here, and I'll do that in just a sec to hold my seat in so I can inflate that as well much more easily. And there we go, all sealed in place. And to inflate the seat, you've got this little spout here. And there it is, all inflated. It looks really, really slick, and you can see the size of it compared to the dog. He's a pretty big dog. Let's take a closer look. So one nice thing up here at the bow is there's a nice handle. There's lots of um, areas to tie down gear here, and you can even buy more all along the side and uh, here at the stern. And of course, our gear, our backpack is in there. Don't forget that. This is all storage. It's all hollow in here, so you can store as much as you want. Just remember, it, it will add to your weight. And this is uh, airproof and waterproof, obviously. So uh, back here, you can tie, you can buy deck bags. So they have great little tie downs for here uh, to go over right there or at the front. They are pretty expensive, so you could probably get away with a kayak bag, like a kayak deck bag, or just using your own dry bags. I just use my own dry bags and uh, tie them down, and I'll show you what I use in just a second. So there's just a regular uh, 20 liter dry bag, and I've got these bungee cords here, and they have um, just a carabiner at the end. Buy these at the dollar store. I also saw them at Cabela's actually, but half price at the dollar store. So you can just sort of tie them on. So there you go. Super easy peasy. And I like the carabiners because they're not going to puncture uh, the boat. And you can kind of tie your stuff on there. There's also lots of tie downs everywhere else for all of your gear. And here it is, all loaded up with my gear. So my backpack, my bike, because a lot of these uh, adventures going with pack craft are land and water. So if you paddle to a place that has like some mountain biking uh, trails, and boom, there you are. And don't forget your gear is in the tubes as well as on the back. Uh, if you have more gear, you take out the seat. Usually the seat's in there for the second person. I don't really uh, bother with it, but I just left it in there to show you guys that you can put another big bag right there, for example, where the seat is. And there we are, ready to go for our adventure. And one thing you should never leave home without when you're boating is a boat safety kit. This one's really handy. This is from Bass Pro Shops. It's the Fox 40 Outdoor Marine boat safety kit. It's got your rope in there. It's got a first aid kit. It has a compass, a light, a couple of glow sticks, a whistle, and a strap in there as well. Your bailing bucket is this thing right here. It's also a good storage vessel and like a sponge too to kind of mop up some water that you get in the boat. So uh, this is really great. I can just hook this right on to one of the D straps right here, D rings, and uh, off I go on my adventures and staying safe. I also mean to show you the kind of the width that we're dealing with in here. It's about, oh, Fully inflated, it's about 18 inches. So it's a good bit in there for you to sit down and for all your gear. Can your dog go in the boat? Absolutely. Um, they're not very easily punctured. So Royce has been in the boat many times, put his feet all over it, and no punctures so far.
And there it is, all packed up. Let's put it back in its bag. And there it is. All folded up in its bag. And if it's perfect in this backpack, there's lots of space to spare. Well, it's really a neat product, isn't it? So next video, I'm gonna to talk to you all about the pros and cons, what my initial impressions are paddling this boat. Have a great week. We'll see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.